Well, uh, my task tonight is to uh, introduce uh, Professor Vanin Brazil. Uh, the first thing I want to say about him is, is that he's obvious, uh, very, obviously a very courageous man. He arrived uh, from Brussels uh, in Wellington this morning at 2 o'clock in the morning. At uh, 6 o'clock, he had his first uh, uh, TV interview, and he hasn't stopped since. Uh, but uh, Professor Van Nicozel is somebody who has uh, dedicated his whole life to climatology. As a kid already, I would say, he had an interest in, in, uh, in uh, scientific matters and, and, uh, and nature. Uh, then later on, he uh, made a PhD. Uh, and his thesis uh, was about climate change and the effect on Antarctica. And then very soon he uh, became uh, involved in uh, international negotiations. Uh, uh, he attended the first uh, conference ever, uh, first international uh, conference on uh, climate change in 1976? Nine. Nine. 79. 79. Uh, and he has uh, attended all the, uh, uh, the conference on, on climate change, all the COP except two. Um, so it's really somebody who uh, uh, altogether is uh, a very uh, an excellent scientist, uh, which can give an excellent uh, scientific argument uh, about <coughs> climate change, and the reason what can be done. Uh, but he's also somebody who has followed closely and, and for a long time now all the political aspect of all the international uh, negotiations. And I think his visit here is very timely, uh, because as you know, uh, uh, in, uh, at the end of this year, uh, starting on the 30th of December, <coughs> we'll have a conference in, in Paris, the 21st COP. Uh, we have uh, the European Union and Belgium as a member state have very high uh, expectation. The European Union was uh, the first member of the G20 to table a, a, a proposal on the 1st of March of this year. And we want to encourage all our, our friends and partners, inclusive uh, New Zealand, uh, to table serious proposals because I think it must be done. So, uh, uh, like you, I'm looking forward to, uh, to hear the message from Professor Vanny Thank you very much. Thank you, Your Excellency, the President, Madam. Ladies and gentlemen, dear colleagues, dear friends, it's a honor and pleasure to uh, be able to talk to you tonight. Uh, I'm not in the front, front of the screen, so that's fine. Um, I'd like to um, draw some ideas, some key messages from the last IPCC report, the fifth in a long series, to which I should say many eminent New Zealand scientists, many of them being present in this room have contributed and I'd like to thank them for their contribution because uh, they really helped together with 800 other authors to uh, produce the quality uh, product that we had at the end of this uh, assessment uh, cycle. And I'd like to um, use those ideas, of course it's a subjective selection because out of 5,000 pages how can you speak about some aspects in half an hour and uh, open uh, the, um, the discussion uh, on, on the run-up to uh, the Paris conference at the end of this year. Uh, of course, it has to be a, a, a selective choice, but I will attempt. And of course, what I have not covered uh, to your frustration maybe uh, can be uh, addressed in the question time a little later. So first a reminder on what the IPCC is and why it was established a little more than 25 years ago. The IPCC is the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change. It was established by two UN organizations, the World Meteorological Organization, WMO, and the United Nations Environment Programme, UNEP, in 1988, not to do additional research on climate change, but I'd like to claim to do something that's even more original, that's even more original than to do additional research on climate change, and that, that is to produce for the first time on an organized basis, on a, on a very rigorous basis, an assessment of the quality of the scientific information about all the dimensions 
uh, of the climate change issue. The, of course, the climate science aspects themselves, but also the science and the knowledge related to the impacts, observed impacts, future potential impacts, uh, the adaptation strategies to cope with those uh, impacts and reduce their severity, uh, and last but not least, the mitigation of climate change that is mostly uh, through the reduction of uh, emissions of greenhouse gases. The three main questions uh, the last IPCC report, uh, an assessment report uh, in our jargon AR5 because it's the fifth in the series which started in 1990. Um, the three main questions the last report are answering in a nutshell are the following. What is happening in the climate system? What are the risks? And what can be done about those risks? Now you see on the left side the covers uh, of the three contributions to the uh, AR5 uh, produced by the three working groups constituting the bulk of IPCC, the working group one dealing with climate science, the, the uh, physical aspect of climate science mostly, uh, the second working group dealing with impact, vulnerability and adaptation, and the third working group dealing with mitigation. Now I didn't put arrows between the working group covers and the working group reports, each of them being approximately 1,500 to 2,000 pages, and the questions, because some of the questions are addressed by uh, two or sometimes uh, three uh, reports. Now, I know I have too many slides. I know. I try to compress my talk, but I know I have too many slides and I really want to leave the time for, for the, uh, the question time, so I will not go uh, over uh, the time that uh, has been allotted, which is, I think, until a quarter past six, is that uh, 20 past six, is that the idea? I will not go beyond that, so to allow uh, for interactions. Uh, and to be sure, that you have had the key messages from uh, AR5, I will start with that attempt to summarize the 5,000 pages in one slide. <laughs> because as le at least you will, would have had that tonight. The first key message is that human influence on the climate system is clear. No ambiguity there, very clear sentence. The second is continued emissions of greenhouse gases and I'm not going to read every of my slides like this, but these are key messages are pretty important, so I take the liberty to do that for this specific slide only. Continued emissions of greenhouse gases will increase the likelihood of severe, pervasive, and irreversible impacts for people and ecosystems, and I should add, and I will illustrate that later if I have the time, uh, very often, mostly and first for poor people which are, who are affected uh, first. Third key message, while climate change is a threat to sustainable development, there are many opportunities to integrate mitigation, adaptation and also the pursuit of other societal objectives beyond the climate change issue. Finally, in a nutshell, and this is very important to remember before the COP21 in Paris, humanity has the means, and this is the present tense is used there, has the means to limit climate change and build a more sustainable and resilient future. Now, is there climate change? Well, when you read some media sometimes, or when you watch some media sometimes, you might have the impression they show you this kind of curve that there is no clear temperature trend, that there is a very uh, stable temperature at the global scale. And indeed, it's hard to uh, see any positive trend there. So is there really a, a warming? I mean, is there a reason for concern? Well, you could have asked that question actually a few times during the century by cherry-picking you know, a starting date and an end date, 
during the century you could have argued uh, is this working that you know from here to here that uh, climate has uh, cool that from here to here climate has cool that from here to here etc so many times that this is cherry picking and also this is not climate because these periods are 10 to 20, 20 years at most long and climate is usually defined over a 30 year period as the average over a 30 year period and also the uh, other statistical characteristics around the average but the key element is the average and of course when you cherry pick and you choose a starting date and an end date on a limited time period, it's easy to demonstrate what you, what you want. It's called lying with statistics. You really need to look at the full picture, and I'm sorry this picture ends in 2012 because the, the plot I, 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 I used uh, was made uh, around that time, but uh, you got the, uh, the message. You need, really need to look at the, uh, the entire record and to stand back and to look at uh, the, the trend over a long period of time, then you really see that climate is indeed warming. And if I had had the last uh, few years on this diagram, you would have seen uh, that the temperature has actually continued to, to go up uh, clearly. It's not only temperature uh, which is showing that climate is changing. I mean, the glaciers, and I could have shown, I'm sure, a New Zealand glacier here, the Fox Glacier, but I didn't have a, a picture handy for that. Uh, the glaciers are receding and this is the behavior of most glaciers in the world. Look at this one in Alaska, a picture taken in 1961 and from the same viewpoint, the same glacier, the same focal length, sorry, uh, in 2003. 